What's up guys, welcome back to the channel. I decided to make a separate video of assembling these Timberin axle suspension, basically the hubs and the bearings and greasing them and everything like that because some people may not be familiar with that or may have never done it. So I wanted to make a nice step-by-step -step how to on how to do that and basically just show you how to go from these parts and the spindle to a assembled piece that's ready to bolt on to the Timberin. As far as what parts you should have in front of you before you can actually assemble this hub, uh, this is the inner bearing and the inner seal that will go on the outside of this bearing. This is the outer bearing, the washer, castle nut, cotter pin, uh, and then your cap with your little grease buddy cap. Tools you're going to need to complete this job, a pair of channel locks or adjustable wrench that will fit that castle nut right there, a block of wood and a hammer, which I will show you what that's for when we get there, and of course some grease because we got to grease these things up. So we'll get right to it. I do recommend wearing rubber gloves. Grease is nasty and it's easier to just take the gloves off and have some clean hands to be able to go inside and clean up. We're gonna start with our inner bearing here. And we, before you can install it into the uh, hub itself, you're gonna wanna grease it up. There's two methods that you can go about doing it. There's something like this, which basically you drop the bearing down in there. It's got a little plunger top you push on there and it shoots the grease up through all the rollers, greases it and lubes it very well. Uh, that's what I use at work for stuff like this. Second method you could do, get a nice glob of grease in your hand, go ahead and take your bearing and just start rubbing through the grease in your hand and rotate around as you do it. And then as you can see, you can see grease is starting to kind of poke through here and get all in between the rollers. Basically you just want to go all the way around and just work it until you get grease in every single crevice all around this thing because it's very important that it's greased. So this is the back side of our hub. This is the race that our bearing is gonna seat into. What you wanna go ahead and do is just take a little bit of grease, kinda give that a little bit of a pre-lube, and then as you can see here, this uh, bearing that I already greased, or the one I was showing you how to grease with my hands, I mean, it is just, it's nice and covered inside and out. No parts that are missing any grease. The tapered side is gonna go down, so you're gonna drop it in. Make sure it's sitting nice and flush like that. Now it's time to install our outer seal. This flush side, is gonna go up, so you're gonna set this in place like so. This is where your wood and your hammer come into play. So basically what we're gonna do is take this flat side of the piece of wood, we're just gonna give it some light taps. You wanna make sure this is going in nice and even, you don't want one side to go in further than the other, then it'll end up all crooked and you could risk ruining your seal. So you can see we got it hammered in there. It's all nice and flush around the edge. That is possible because we got a piece of wood that before it could push this seal in too far into the hub, it'll actually, this edge, it'll hit here and here. So because of that, it ends up making the seal nice and flush with the edge, which is exactly what you want. So now I flipped the hub over and we're looking at the front side of it. Before we put this hub on the spindle itself, you're gonna to wanna to glob some grease. There's a cavity in there, uh, kind of a, an empty space in a way, and you're gonna to wanna to glob some grease all along that wall. Not an excessive amount, obviously, nothing crazy. Just some globs on there, because as this is going down the road and that heats up, this grease can travel to the bearings. Think of it as kind of like a reservoir to help keep the bearings lubed. Next, we're gonna put the hub on the spindle, but first, there's a groove inside of this seal that you want to put some grease in. This is a little kind of a, uh, a cavity that keeps grease and this is the part of the seal that will ride on the spindle and actually seal it to keep water and dust out. It's important that you put grease in here. Um, if you run it dry, you run the risk of it heating up the seal, making a dry rot crack and fail, which will make your bearings fail. Go ahead, make sure your spindle is free of any rust or debris or anything like that before you put your hub on. We're gonna grab it. As you can see, the studs are facing me, and you can see our seal in our inner bearing that we put in. That is just gonna slide right over like this, and you might have to give it a little bit of a push, and then you can kinda get a, that positive click that you know the uh, bearing is on the spindle where it should be. Next is to install the outer bearing, which is the smaller of the two. So go ahead and grease that up, just like you did the other one. We got our greased up outer race once again, the tapered side is going to go in with the larger side on the outside. That's just gonna slide right over. 
Just like before, you'll know when it's seated, you can kind of feel it kind of pop into place. Next, we got our washer and then our castle nut. We're gonna take our channel locks and tighten it up until it's a little snug. What I like to do is give it a little snug. We're gonna go ahead and rotate it, let the bearings find their home <laughs> and seat where they need to seat. After that, I like to go ahead and back it off. This isn't gonna be very tight. Some car manufacturers give you a spec. I looked all online. Even on uh, Timbrin's video, I was hoping they would show me a spec that I could tell you guys. Basically, you're just gonna lightly snug it up. What you're looking for is no up and down play. So hold it at 12 and six and rock it back and forth. Make sure you don't feel any play. If you don't feel any play, I recommend backing it off a little bit. Seeing if you feel play still anymore. See, there we go. Now I got a little bit of play in there. So I'll go ahead and tighten it up just a bit. And now it's gone. Uh, so that's kind of the sweet spot there for the bearings. You don't want it too tight. Too tight's gonna cause too much heat and too much heat will cause failure. After you position your castle nut where it needs to be, you may have to do a little bit of adjustment because there is a special hole that this cotter pin is gonna go in. Just like that. That slips through the hole and that ensures that this castle nut cannot back off any more than that slot allows it to. Go ahead and take your pliers, bend it up. There we go, now you have no worries about this castle nut coming loose and letting your bearings get loose go down the road. One thing to note is that trailer hubs like this aren't just kind of a one and done type of thing. After we get this assembled and you get it on your trailer, maybe do a couple test drives, get a few miles on it, and then you're gonna wanna come back and you're gonna wanna recheck this because once things seat, it could become loose. And actually once you get, obviously I don't have this on the trailer right now, so I can't put the tire on to check it. But if you're doing this on your trailer, even right now, before you do the cotter pin, I recommend you bolt your wheel up. You'll still have access to this through your uh, where the center cap would be. Try to grab that wheel at uh, 12 and 6. Try to shake it like I showed you before and see if that if you have any play. And if it is, you're going to tighten it up and try to find that sweet spot again. Once again, after you get some miles on it, recheck it because you don't want to have to go back, uh, buy new bearings, and rebuild your hub on a brand new trailer. At this point, pretty much all that's left is to put your grease cap on and then your little rubber access cap that gives you access to your grease fitting here. So you can do maintenance on the bearing itself and actually grease it on the trailer. Super easy, just pop the rubber cap and grease it. I'm not gonna put this on yet. Uh, I wanna get it on the trailer and mess with it first and make sure this is all adjusted correct. But yeah guys, that's pretty much it. Uh, nice and simple, maybe not as hard as you thought in your head. It's a crucial part of the trailer build and I think just about anybody can do it uh, with a little bit of instruction. So I'm glad I can provide that for you guys. If you guys are interested in seeing the trailer that I'm building, go ahead and subscribe. Go check out part one. I actually have another trailer I built before this. Part two for this trailer is gonna be coming out uh, here in a little while. It's gonna be just a bit. I got a lot of work to do. Give you guys a little sneak peek what it looks like. It's upside down right now, but it's basically a Overland trailer. It's gonna have a rack for a rooftop tent and all that stuff. And I'll have plenty of details on that in my other videos. So thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe and we'll see you next time.